All right, welcome to this uh, video, how to build a successful uh, Warhammer 40,000 army or 40k force. And it's a series of videos I've been meaning to do for a long time. I've got a lot of contact uh, on the channel from people who are new to the hobby or looking for some uh, advice and guidance as far as strategy and so on is concerned. So uh, these sort of videos are going to try and help you out, especially if you're new to the hobby or you're a, a, a gamer that doesn't have much experience. Uh, so this one's really important, how to build a successful army in Warhammer 40,000. So an army that performs well in games. And just obviously say to you that uh, it's not about winning. Uh, you're there to enjoy the games. But uh, it's still nice to be able to take your army and lead it to, lead it to victory in games. So hopefully this video will give you some pointers in the right direction. And specifically, we're going to be looking at actually constructing uh, that force an army that works well and plays well in games so uh, if I was to start a new army the, the first thing that I would do is to get the codex I wouldn't buy any units to start off with um, choose an army that I like the look of and an army that the style of play uh, would match sort of what I'm looking for so get the codex first read it through and then just sort of start looking around for units that you think would work well uh, and then I really would actually take my time and then uh, I would choose some core units, so units that I definitely want in the force. And usually when you read the codex through, there'll be units that stand out and ones that you'll, you'll make up your mind that no matter what, you definitely want them in your force. So uh, those I would get, that would be your core units, usually a couple of infantry units or an elite unit that you really like um, to be in your army. So start there, Add, and then you've got to build up the force from that, that starting point. Uh, and the way to do that is, first of all, I would start out with an overall battle plan. So you know the army that you've got, uh, you know its style of play and its strengths, and every faction is, is different, um, which is the great thing about Warhammer 40,000, you've got that great diversity. Uh, so you want to develop an overall battle plan, how you're going to lead this army, and how you're going to make it perform well in games, and sort of this kind of this overarching plan, how you're going to defend your objectives, how you're going to claim objectives, how you're going to take out flyers, how you're going to take out monstrous creatures, this this overall arching plan. You've got to build a force then to help you accomplish um, that overall battle plan. So, for example, you might say, well, I'm, I want to collect Imperial Guard, and uh, I think their strength is sort of defensive strengths. So then you want to build a force that's good at defending. So it's nice long-ranged weapons that you can, uh, you know, pound the enemy from a distance. And then some kind of force to then swoop in and take enemy objectives or challenge their objectives at the other end of the table. Um, so that could be your overall battle plan. Uh, or you might say, well, I'm collecting Eldar. I want a force that's going to reach the enemy really quick. Or a force that's going to uh, swoop down on one flank. So then you tr then try and build a force that will uh, match that plan that you have. So some kind of overall battle plan. And then try and stick to it. And you want units to uh, fit those roles. And then stand back and look at your army um, and then see if it has the potential to fulfill that battle plan. Because when the game gets going, uh, you, you want to have an overall plan that you can stick to uh, each turn. And uh, if you know where you're going with a force, uh, then it means uh, that you're, you're better organised in your head. With, with, you won't have units sort of wandering around not knowing what you're doing with them, um, but you'll be better organised. So an overall battle plan is very important. Right, the next thing you want to do, and I've found this helpful when I'm building a force, is you want to split your units down into attack and defense. Uh, whatever game you're playing, you're going to need units that are going to be able to challenge the opponent in some way in his own deployment zone. And you're also going to want units that are going to protect uh, your own objectives as well. So if you label each of your units um, with that kind of role, then that will help you be better organized and help balance your force as well. Um, you might want to go 50-50, half your units to defend and half to attack, or, or uh, if you're mainly a defensive army, you, you may want sort of 70% of your army to be defensive and then a smaller force just to swoop in uh, later on in the game. Or if you're, in, you're an army that's uh, really geared towards an attacking the opponent, taking the fight to the enemy, like uh, my Eldar force, for example, then you know 70-80% of it uh, would be attacking geared towards moving towards the opponent 
and then uh, just a small few amount of units uh, that hold your own objectives in your own half of the table. So that's what you've got to decide what your overall battle plan is and then from that you then uh, start splitting your force down into attack and defense. Now, I mean I, could, I would usually do this all on paper, this is before really I've even got the army going. Um, I'd sort of organize before I've even got the army going, I'd sort of organize, I'd sort of organize the force um, into those roles and uh, really when you're happy with a force then you can start um, collecting it. I seem to I tend to take a long time now with a codex before I start uh, building up the units. So uh, attack or defense, uh, really important and uh, that's a key one to get in place. You're just sort of uh, building the overall structure of your your force, getting it clear in your head and then if in your mind when you're playing a game you know what the roles of the units are uh, that's really gonna uh, help. So that really leads into unit roles. You, you're splitting your army into attack and defense and then you want units that are gonna uh, match that. So you, you don't want to confuse units. You want to send in say uh, a brave lord, he's gonna be uh, your one that's gonna challenge the opponent's objectives towards the end of the game. Well, you've got to be careful about that because the Wraith Lord's slow and uh, it may not be the best kind of unit uh, for reaching long distance objectives in the game. You've got to match your unit choices uh, to your overall strategy and if you're going to attack them, you know, if you're going to make them attack or defense, then uh, they've got to match that role. So, uh, for example, you want a unit that's going to swoop in on enemy objectives towards the end of the game. Well, Eldar jet bikes would be great for that. They've got the potential uh, to do it. So be realistic with your unit choices and uh, give them a specific role in the game. Then another key point is troops. Uh, you've got to make sure that your troops' choices, obviously, because in games, a lot of the time you're going to be trying to take objectives and hold them with troops' choices. Um, so for example, a disaster in games that I've played has been the Dark Elder Warriors. Uh, too soft for holding objectives, they've always got blown away, so that's been a poor troops choice that I've made in the force. Um, but um, in other games more successful with the Eldar, the jet bikes have been great. Uh, just a small little unit, cheap in points cost, quite tough, good armor save, and I've kept them out of trouble, and tremendous speed, so they're excellent for... Uh, holding objectives and the other advantage of them is they don't have to get out of a transport to hold an objective they can just fly on top of it and they count as holding so a, another key point to consider and you've got to get this right and that is your troops choices for your force you've got to have good troops choices um, and then kind of decide how you're going to do it whether you're going to have a troops choice that's going to sit an objective and you're going to anticipate that it's going to take casualties it's going to be tough enough to survive or if it's a troops choice that you're going to keep out of trouble uh, and then uh, move on objectives later on in the game. So like the jet bikes for the Eldar, um, I try and keep them out of the trouble, out of trouble in the game and then uh, zoom them in later on. That seems to work really well because uh, the, the opponent has the rest of my force to deal with and is unable to focus on those jet bikes. Um, same with the Blood Angels, I keep the small units, the five man assault squads and the Razorbacks, it protects them, keeps them out of trouble and then later on uh, they just sit on top of the objectives and that seems to work really well for them. So get your troops choice uh, clear and strong, you've got to be happy with your troops uh, and how they're going to perform in the game. Uh, the next thing is to anticipate damage, you've got to be realistic and anticipate what kind of damage you think a unit's going to receive. If you've got a unit that's going to take two turns to get up the other end of the table, realistically what kind of damage is it going to take? Um, and try and build a unit to to anticipate that, to try and absorb some of the uh, damage that's going to come in. For example, you take a unit of death company, you give you get five of them, you give them all thunder hammers. Uh, chances are you're going to lose a few of those in combat or in shooting or from Overwatch, and then you've spent the points on those Thunder Hammers and they've they've died. So maybe a wiser thing to do would be to take perhaps two or three Thunder Hammers and then cushion them, protect them by uh, four or five of a regular Death Company that haven't got any upgrades, but they're the ones that are going to be removed as casualties. And it hasn't cost you as much in points 
when those casualties are received. So anticipate damage, look at a unit and say, is this going to stand any chance? Um, and then say I'm building Imperial Fists at the moment, I'm taking full tactical squads, 10-man tactical squads, and they're going to be in the front line, but I'm anticipating damage, perhaps 50% casualties on those. Uh, but it should be fine if five Marines remain at the end of the game then they will have accomplished their mission if they're holding an objective. So think about what damage you're going to take. Um, if you've got a transport that you, you're going to zoom up the table then uh, and you think it's going to take hits, then protect it if you can. Give it some upgrades uh, to fulfill that role. Uh, that will help you. You've got to be realistic. You can't think that every unit's going to... You know, all the units in your force are going to survive the game. You've... Uh, got to think to yourself, right, I'm going to take casualties somewhere and try and be realistic about where those casualties are going to come in and then, you know, s stand back and look and see if your force will still be uh, if it will still work even though you've lost perhaps 50%, 25% of your force is it still an army that can do damage and win games so that's what you're looking for uh, be realistic with that point Next thing that's important is diversity in an army. Uh, so I try and build a force uh, that is designed to take on an unknown opponent. That means it's ready to take on any kind of opponent that comes. Uh, so that's uh, an opponent that's got loads of monstrous creatures or hordes and hordes of uh, lightly armed infantry or uh, a high ratio of flyers in their force. Just you need to build an army that's ready to take on anyone. For example, if you've got a force that's really good in close combat against heavy infantry, uh, but you've got no anti-tank capability in your army, uh, then you're going to get beaten. If someone brings you know, 10 lean rushes in a game, then you're going to be in big, big trouble. So build a diverse force um, that's ready to take on any kind of opponent, and you're ready to adapt to whatever someone brings along, uh, then whatever someone brings along, then you're ready to fight them. And you're not going to win every game. Uh, you can't be diverse enough to fight every kind of opponent, uh, but it will help you, generally speaking. Uh, right, next thing I do uh, in an army is once I've got my list there, I total up the number of units that are anti-tank. Uh, so I do a tally, uh, so I'm collecting 1850 points list. Uh, I just put a, a tally mark for every unit that's capable of taking out uh, tanks. And that's either in sort of close combat or from shooting, uh, it's either long or short range, and then total that up. And if I'm if I'm lacking in that, then I'll have to rethink the force. Uh, you've got to have anti-tank capability. Uh, if all your opponent's force is in transports, and you've got a brilliant army that's good at combat, but you can't crack into those transports, then your army's doomed. You're going to have to have units that can uh, break open enemy armor. So for an 1850 points army, I'm looking for about seven or eight units about two-thirds of the force at least that has some kind of anti-tank uh, capability and like good at being anti-tank not ones that are gonna fire a couple of auto cannons but ones that are uh, powerful enough to take on the heaviest of armor that's either at short or long range so the Eldar force for example Wraith Knights anti-tank two uh, Wraith Lords anti-tank fire dragons are anti-tank uh, the wave serpents now class as anti-tank uh, they've got that capability of uh, taking out heavy vehicles from the side or rear or medium vehicles head on uh, and then if the scorpions can glance a vehicle to death as well with the, and also with the uh, scorpion scorpions fists at strength six the avatars anti-tank so a whole load of units in that force warp spiders now as well anti-tank as well so a lot of anti-tank options because in the game if half your force is blown away you still want some units on the table that are able to take on uh, enemy vehicles so critical point that one check your force to see if it's got enough anti-tank units uh, to be able to deal with a mechanized force and usually anti-tank also means anti-monstrous creature if you've got high powered uh, low AP weapons then they will also be able to be used against monstrous creatures as well basic units that can take on uh, the opponent's toughest units uh, then you also want to look at unit combinations. That's uh, units that work well together. Sometimes a unit on its own uh, is alright, but if you combine it with another unit that complements it, the two units can work well together, uh, then uh, that's a really good idea. 
uh, give you an example uh, just transport vehicles as well space for a tactical squad inside a rhino uh, just adds a bit of protection for the tactical squad some mobility as well and the tactical squad is still able to fire out the top of the rhino so that's a sort of a basic unit combination uh, that works well uh, another example of sort of independent units in my Eldar force the scorpions that come on the flank uh, they work well with the wave serpent if they just walk on the table uh, they've got limited uh, actions that they can do they just have to walk on and if they come on the wrong flank then they've got a long walk to try and reach the opposing force but if I bring them on in a transport vehicle in the wave serpent uh, then I can bring them on at any speed across the table I've got some fire support and I've got that option of keeping them protected inside the transport if they come on into an area that's too hostile for them at that point in the game so brilliant combination uh, that I really enjoy using is the uh, striking scorpions and the wave serpent and then flanking with them as well works really well uh, but on top of that uh, the warp spiders working with them also works well uh, so you, if I can uh, bring both of those on from reserve at the same time so I have a wave serpent that flanks bring that on and then uh, deep strike the uh, warp spiders in and around that area that's two units that can appear almost at any point in the table and uh, give fire support and the advantage of them is they can appear on the flanks or on the rear of enemy uh, infantry and vehicles and uh, can cause havoc so those kind of combinations that you'll find, you get that for experience. Uh, so, uh, but look out for that units that work well, and also units that work well in defence or characters that you can add to units to enhance them. Uh, add in my deaf company. Uh, so, for example, also with the Blood Angels, adding the chaplain to the deaf company unit makes uh, that unit absolutely deadly on the charge. Uh, so, unit combinations is important. We find ones that work well for you and then really uh, is the importance of compensating for weaknesses in your force again you've got to be realistic about your army what is its weakness is it a very slow army is it uh, not very tough uh, does it lack anti-tank capability uh, there will be weaknesses with every force uh, it might be a force that's very expensive in points and you're very you end up fielding a very small army that can be a weakness um, so there's all different ones be realistic analyze and find out what your weakness is so for Eldar the weakness generally with the Eldar is the is the sort of the toughness issue they're only strength free toughness free on average um, so to compensate for that what I've done in my Eldar force is to put units in transport vehicles so that keeps them uh, protected in games and then also uh, to to build up for that lack of strength, I've taken tough units like the Wraith Lords and the Wraith Knight. And those are tough units that push up the general toughness of the Eldar force. So whatever army it is that you're doing, uh, be realistic, look for the weaknesses and then try and find ways of compensating for them. But uh, the most important thing is to enjoy building your force. Choose an army that you like. And then uh, really think about what you're going to collect, because collecting 40k it's not the it's not the cheapest of hobbies. Um, but if you take your time, and then choose units that you're definitely happy with, and then uh, bear those points that I've made in mind. So you're looking to get the codex first, develop an overall battle plan, your, your core strategy of what you're going to do in the game, and uh, that will help the whole game be clear in your head what you're going to do. And then uh, split your army down. Get a break your army down into a, an attacking force and a defensive force, and then uh, get those unit roles, choose them, uh, allocate units to give them a job to do in the game. It's basically what you're doing. Uh, make sure you get your troops right, get good troops choices, and then anticipate damage in your army. Where you think the damage is going to come from? Will the units just fall apart, or will they be able to take damage but still continue to function in the game? And then be diverse, have a diverse army that's able to deal with any opponent. And then uh, bear in mind the anti-tank total. Make sure you've got a good amount of anti-tank capability in your force. And then look for those unit combinations, combinations of units that work well in the game. And then finally compensate for any weaknesses in your force. 
So that's it. I hope that's some good advice for you if you're starting out fresh in the Warhammer 40,000 uh, game or the hobby, or if uh, you've been gaming for a while but just looking for some general tips. But uh, I think if you go by those, then they will help you build a force. Also, check the comments in the, at the bottom of this video. No doubt there'll be some experienced players. They'll give you their feedback as well and what they think, and uh, they'll give you their own tips as well for building a successful army. And then if you want to see the units in action, then check out the battle reports on this channel, and you'll see real games. And so if you're thinking about choosing certain units, then uh, check them out on the battle reports and see how they actually perform, and uh, make your own judgment from there. But above all, enjoy yourself as you collect your force, whatever faction that may be. Thanks for watching.